Welcome everyone to the Science of Sport virtual field trip. My name is Darren Heaton. Today we're very excited to be talking about footwear design. Uh, the goal about these field trips, these virtual field trips, are to expose you guys to some different opportunities within STEM and sports. And so we want to welcome everyone uh, from our summer camps that are watching uh, across the country. Special shout out to those in Dallas, New Orleans, and Compton. Uh, but most importantly, uh, I'm excited to welcome our amazing guest today, uh, Christina Kerrig, who is the senior footwear designer at Nike. Uh, we're, we're thrilled to have her with us today. So, uh, Christina, let's get let's get down to business. Hey, What's everyone. your favorite shoe? You know, that is one of the hardest questions for a footwear designer, um, but we get asked all the time and for sure I have a handful. And, you know, I was about maybe this crowd's age when the WNBA started and with WNBA were the first Cheryl Swoops and that like blew my mind and changed my life. Um, yeah, I would say the Swoops, the Air Swoops 2 was probably my favorite. Nice. I'm uh, keeping it traditional over here. Mine are the Air Force Ones, so uh, I'm I'm actually rocking the the Raygons uh, today. So, nice. um, uh, but uh, tell us a little bit about you know where where you're from, your a little bit of your background. Sure. Um, I grew up in a super small town in Ohio. Uh, about you know 40 people in my graduating class. It was it was small. Um, and then I went to a school called the University of Cincinnati for undergrad. And that's kind of the most common way um, people become footwear designers. They usually study um, product or industrial design. We can get into that later. But I um, uh, went to Cincinnati, worked for a little bit, went back to grad school in Michigan outside of Detroit. And then from grad school, I went to Nike. So I've been in Nike at Nike in Portland for the past 10 years. And I'm coming at you live from my attic space where I've been working for the, over a year now with um, from the work from home, which maybe a lot of you have been having school from home or your family members working from home. So that's where I am. You might see my dogs or hear my dogs because they're here working too. Nice. And where are your offices at? Our offices are located in Beaverton, Oregon, which is about a 10 mile drive away. Um, yeah, so they've been here since the beginning of Nike. Nike kind of was founded in, um, in Oregon at the University of Oregon. So yeah. Is that where you do all of your footwear design at? Or, I mean, pre-COVID? Yeah. Uh, I'm excited about getting back on our beautiful campus. We call it a campus because it really is like a college campus. We've got football fields, soccer fields, basketball courts, um, gyms, cafeterias, a little bit of everything. So I'm excited to go back. When I go back, they built design a brand new building called the Serena Williams Building. So. Um, that's where I'll be designing from when we get back there. I love that. Awesome. So uh, I know I'm excited. I know the kids are excited and uh, the students that are watching it, please utilize the chat, uh, throw your questions in there and we'll we'll uh, get them all answered. And uh, I'm excited to, to, to hear what you have in store with us. And it looks like you got a great setup behind you too. Try to prepare a few things. <laughs> love it. All right. Well, uh, let's let's get into it. Cool. Thanks so, uh, yeah. Thanks everyone for having me today. This is not what I usually do. I'm usually behind a desk drawing shoes and working with my colleagues. So hopefully this is interesting. And hopefully if I inspired just a couple of you or give you new information that you never thought existed, that's my goal. Um, definitely use the chat, ask me questions and I'll try to answer as I can. Um, I've been at Nike for 10 years, which is kind of mind boggling to me. In those years, I've designed running shoes. So you might recognize this is a Nike running shoe. This is another color. Um, I've designed kids' shoes. So a couple of kids' shoes I've designed. I've designed women's lifestyle shoes. So here's one, more recent one. Here's another one. Um, and then about a year ago, just before COVID, I switched to Nike basketball. So I've been designing basketball shoes. I can't share those projects with you yet because they're just too new to share. But I hope that people here, or that you guys here really like shoes or are interested in shoes, and maybe some of you really, really, really like shoes, because that would be cool. Um, but if you think about it, maybe think about what your favorite pair of shoes are, right? We all wear them. 
why are they your favorite pairs of shoes? Are they comfortable? Are they your favorite colors? Are they the shoes that your favorite athletes wear? Um, that's our job to make sure we make shoes that people love, right? As footwear designers. Um, does anyone here already know about footwear design or want to be a footwear designer? Um, and on the topic of sports specifically, what do you think is one of the most important pieces of equipment for any athlete? It's shoes, right? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, yep, like I said, I'm from Ohio. I came out to Nike about 10 years ago and, um, and it's gone really, really fast. I studied what was called industrial design. So if you're interested in becoming a footwear designer, the most common way is to go to college and study what we call either industrial design or product design. Schools call them different things, but that, that's kind of where footwear designers end up, right? And when you're in industrial design or product design, you might not just specialize in footwear when you study it. Um, if you look around your room today, wherever you're, whatever chair you're sitting on, whatever desk you're sitting at, if you're looking, watching this on a tablet or a laptop or a phone, all of these items had to be designed by someone, right? And that someone probably studied industrial or product design. Um, and so, you know, there's a, there's a basic like artistic inspiration and passion that a lot of designers have. And when you go to school for industrial design or product design, some schools want you to have good grades and some schools want you to submit a portfolio. So if you're interested in studying to be a footwear designer, I'd say start researching those schools and start understanding what, what the things are that you need to have to apply to these schools. Okay, so let's say, yeah. Christina, I just wanna pop back in here because uh, uh, we do have a couple questions, but oh, wow. you know, you, you, did, you talked a lot about uh, industrial design um, and, and I, I'm curious if, if you can do a, a quick explanation on the differences between industrial design and maybe engineering design? Sure. Are you using both of those or are they entirely separate? They're, they're separate. They're usually separate. Industrial design or product design often falls under like an arts field or a design field. Um, we take very different courses. So you probably take more um, art curriculum, art history curriculum. You learn how to draw really well usually. You usually learn how to use programs like Adobe Acrobat, Adobe Photoshop, and programs like that. Um, a lot of times you learn 3D modeling software. So um, Alias, Modo, I, I forget everything that's that's being used right now. So if you're really into 3D modeling, um, we, we work with a lot of 3D modeling. Um, yeah, so that's, I think like that, the curriculum slightly engineering, you're very focused, right? And engineering um, curriculum and, and courses and then, in industrial and product design, you're more it's of an arts field. Some of the some of the programs are. Um, I have a bachelor of science in industrial design. Some programs are a bachelor of arts, but it is different than industrial engineering for sure. How did you get into that? When did you start to decide like this is what you wanted to do? Yeah, um, I was probably about thirteen years old, and I heard I have I have an older brother. Um, and one of his friends was like, I'm gonna go to the University of Cincinnati. I'm gonna study industrial design and someday I'm gonna design shoes for Nike. And I think I was 13 and I was like in the next room and I was like, um, no, cause that's what I'm gonna do. And at that moment, it made the most sense of anything I'd ever heard in my life. And um, you know, I didn't come to Nike right away, like I said, but it definitely was the inspiration for me like starting to research and learn about industrial design. That's awesome. And uh, such, a, such a powerful message too, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know and being able to, you know, have that sort of mindset from a young age and just be exposed to it. Um, and so that's what we're hoping to do today, get some uh, uh, inspiration and show different ways how kids can uh, start to do some, some design on their own, right? Exactly. I'd love to set you up with some of the tools and foundations of understanding how you design shoes, where to start, you know, if you're interested, just get sketching and get thinking and get researching, you know? Yeah. So uh, let me let me throw up a question from one of our uh, camps. This one looks out to uh, it looks like it's coming okay. from Dallas. Um, what materials are you used to make the shoes? Yeah. So a lot of materials and actually um, 
you know, there are a lot of roles that play a huge part in the footwear design or footwear creation process, right? Like I'm a footwear designer, but just like LeBron or Megan Rapino, like I, I have a whole team I work with and a whole team of specialists who are so good at what they do. So I work with engineers, um, uh, chemists, um, developers, analysts, test analysts, um, other kind types of design like color material design and uh, graphic design. And so there's a lot of expertise that goes into just the idea of materials, right? So in footwear, generally across all footwear creation, um, no matter what company you're at, right? In what you would call the sole of a shoe, like this part of the shoe, right? The sole of the shoe, um, that's a foam. That's some type of foam. And there are endless amounts of foam in foam chemistry. So we work with a lot of chemists who are identifying which foams that you want to use. And they all have different properties. Some are bouncier, some are faster, some have a lot of responsiveness to them, right? Um, some just feel like giant pillows under your feet. Um, so that's kind of what fo what foams, what foams kind of do in a really general way. In what we call the upper of a shoe, you're looking at different textiles, synthetics, um, and really thinking about what the needs are for that part of the shoe. Like, do you want it to be super breathable so that your feet feel really cool? Um, do you want it to be waterproof so that there's no rain getting in? And these are all things you think about, right, when you start to design the shoe and start to understand who it is, what the athlete is doing that you're designing it for. That's a long awesome. answer to that question. I love it. No, that, that's great. And, you know, we're, we are working within various sports uh, in our program specifically and uh, made me start to think about different types of soles for uh, sporting shoes. Mm -hmm. Can Are all of them using foam? Uh, are some of them different? Uh, what are the differences, I guess, between different sport shoes? Yeah. So if you think about like a track spike or a soccer boot compared to a casual running shoe that like someone who, like me who is not a professional runner would wear. Like if you look at those shoes, they're very different, right? Like a track spike has, has what we call a plate. A soccer boot has a plate and that's in order to get the most energy return and responsiveness out of your stride. So um, if you think about what I might need to run it's probably just something super soft and cushioned so that I don't hurt myself and I feel comfortable the whole run long, right? Um, it's really specific to the sport that you're playing and the athlete that you're designing for. Awesome, that's that's okay. great. So uh, you wanna take some more questions or do you wanna uh, move um, on to a different topic? Yeah, I think I'll buzz through, I'll buzz through some things to get, get people thinking about maybe how we start to design shoes. That's cool and then we can take more questions later. Perfect. Cool. Um, so say you're interested in designing shoes. Um, I think like a big, a big piece of understanding um, where to start is like get inspired and do the research. Um, research who you're designing it for, who that athlete is, what sort of surface they're running on. Are they running on wet grass? Are they running on a wooden basketball court? Are they playing basketball outside? And understand what those what the environmental factors are right also when i when i get inspired i look at other things too i read books i i understand biomimicry so in things like let's talk about a couple aspects of like what goes into things to consider when designing shoes okay um again who are who are the shoes for what is the athlete doing um how do you want it to feel under your foot like i just said do you want it to be bouncy? Do you want it to feel really fast and just have like a lot of momentum and responsiveness? Do you want the upper to be breathable and waterproof? Um, or do we want to talk about traction and the ideas of traction, right? The underfoot traction of a shoe. Um, all of these things are super important when you're starting to research and get inspired to design a shoe. And you can look at other things outside of footwear. Um, say that you're you're researching traction specifically. Um, what else in the world has traction? Um, I think of car tires, right? Like if you've ever watched a car race or a motorcycle race, they always switch the tires like 
in response to what the track is like. If the track is wet or if the track is really hot, they change those tires out and that's all about traction, right? Um, if you think about things like a cheetah, a cheetah's running really fast. What is on their like, what's on their paws that help them run really fast? It's probably like the tactility and traction of their paws, but they also have claws, right? And they're like digging into the ground. So if you're thinking about things like track spikes and football boots, those are all things that you can research and get inspired by. When we get inspired, there are a lot of times we put together what we call mood boards. Um, these are some mood boards I pulled off Nike.com, but you, you see like, they're all sorts of inspiration. It's like, what does the city look like? What are the shoes that the athlete likes to wear? What are the clothes that they like to wear? What are their favorite colors? What inspires them? And kind of like assemble things together. Like, where's the camera? Assemble things together so that you have a clear vision of what your goals are, right? Um, and so I think another important aspect to talk about when we talk about what to think about when designing shoes is to talk about sustainability, right? This is like a like something we have to be thinking about. Um, there are a lot of resources out there. The places I like to go are looking at some of the expert. Um, so if you look at, I put two, just two websites down and they should be super easy. Nike has one called nikecirculardesign.com. And then there's also a footwear company called Allbirds. All of these are ways to look at sustainability and people do sustainability very differently, right? Um, on the Nike specific website, they talk about a couple ways to approach sustainability in footwear design. Let's see. Put those up there. They talk about material choice, which is all about picking the right materials. Um, whether those materials are made from like better material processes or recycled content. Let's see, this way. Cyclability, so how long, um, how long a shoe will last and what it does at the end of its life cycle. Like do you recycle it when it's done? Can it be disassembled? Um, waste avoidance, so using only exactly what you need to put in the shoe so you're not wasting excess scrap material. Design for disassembly. So disassembly means you can take things apart at the end, you can recycle them, you could refurbish them, you could reuse them in different ways. Green chemistry is a huge one, right? That's looking at the, the foams and the materials and making sure that they're done in like a bio way that they're, they're healthier for the environment than pulling on fossil fuels. Refurbishment, so fixing your shoes. Um, versatility, being able to use your shoes for more things and longer. And then the durability is a huge part of that. So I have a couple examples of ways that we've done sustainability. Um, I worked on a shoe in 2000, I think 2013 or so, um, a Nike Free, right? I don't know if anyone's familiar with Nike Freeze out there, but this is a Nike Free. And the upper material is made from Flyknit. And what's so awesome about the material of Flyknit is that when it comes off the machine, it's knit in just exactly the perfect shape for the shoe. There are no other materials involved. There's no waste created, right? It just isn't knit exactly what you need for a single shoe. Um, so that's one way. And if we look at the we look at the list, you know, is that under material usage? Probably. Is it under waste avoidance? Also, also true. Another example are some recent shoes that Nike came out with called Space Hippies. And as you can see, what do you think is in the midsole foam? It looks a little bit like recycled, sorry, these are dirty, I've worn them, um, like recycled material, and that's absolutely right. You're reusing um, previously used recycled material and waste. The upper, again, is made from Flyknit, so you're using exactly what you need. A third... Yeah. The, the, just real quick, the space hippies there, those are the most recent, right? And they just came out this past year? Yep. Or how long have they been around? Yeah, I think they came out like a year ago or or so. So you might see there are a couple versions of it, but they're usually, they look similar to this. So on these shoes, how much, how many recycled items, like if you break it down into, let's just simplify it, water bottles? 
Is, I, is that something that's I known? Have, I don't have that information, but they, the chemists do, and they have to balance using recycled material with the performance and durability of it, right? So introducing as much recycled material in as you can while maintaining that performance and durability for the athlete and the comfort, right? So, um, so I know that, like everyone kind of does it differently and has different chemical ratios, but that's something like we would work with the chemist, like the chemistry team or the engineers to like dial in that information. Awesome. And uh, just that list that you have behind you, you know, I, I love every part about it because those are things that everyone could do uh, to improve their sustainability, just keeping those uh, in mind. And so, uh, you know, understanding the materials that we're using on a, on a day to day basis, you know, making sure that when we are throwing away items that they're going in the right bin mm -hmm. um, and, you know, uh, plenty, plenty of other different ways. And it can be applied to our day to day lives uh, as well. But it's it's awesome to see the the breakdown uh, that you guys are using at Nike. And is there another shoe that uh, you were going to show? Just one more. And it has a couple more examples. So there's this one that recently came out called the Fontanka. And when you look at this piece here, the Zoom X foam, which is one of our most like responsive foams, right? Like some of our best runners use Zoom X foam in their shoes. Um, this is like reground and recycled um, content for this piece. And then this piece also, you can see, has recycled content in it too. So this isn't necessarily what we would call like a sustainability focus shoe, but it's like there are things you do along the way to make make things better. And um, and also sometimes just get like really cool looks from them, right? Like it doesn't look perfect. And that's like, that's cool. Like that's totally, that's new. That's not something like we, we've really seen before. So that's like three examples of, of way, ways I've, we've integrated um, sustainability into shoes. And on that creativity side, like, is that, is that like your main goal you think when you're designing, uh, you're, you're able to express yourself you know, through the design of that shoe, um, you know, specifically within that last one, are, are those, are those kind of the, the key things that you're focusing on in addition to the sustainability elements? Like how do we make it look really cool? Yeah, I usually try to do things that I haven't seen before, right? Um, if you draw a shoe and it looks familiar and you've seen it before, you're not really like pushing the edges, right? You're not pushing the industry forward. And sometimes you design shoes and they're so crazy and some people don't like them. But to me, I'd rather people think they're crazy than people like them sometimes because that's how you know you're like really pushing the edges. And I think when I think of athletes like Simone Biles, like she does, she performs in ways that no other athlete can do. Um, it's all about like continuing to push the edges because that's what athletes are trying to do as well. Um, and so that's through how it looks, that's through the materials that we're using, the technology that we're using. It's, it's everything combined. Um, yeah, shoes to me, like it, it's, it's a way to express who you are, right? Like, and that could be just for, for the person like myself who is just wearing them, but it's, it's really cool to understand that, like, it's also applied within the design process uh, that you are doing as well. So, um, and, and it's, it's one of those things like you feel connected to the shoe. It makes you feel a certain way. So um, I, I love that. Uh, you're incorporating those into your design. Yeah, I made a list too of some of the other, you know, if you're not interested in being a footwear designer, but you really love shoes and athletes and sports and, and Nike or Adidas or who, whoever it even is, like these are these are really important um, teammates that I, I work with. So athletes, engineers, chemists, marketing. And at the bottom, I have color material and graphic design. And they play a huge role in, in making that connection, right? So picking the colors, picking the textures and materials, um, adding graphics to the shoe. Like I'll, I draw the shoe, but then we all work really collaboratively together. I always think like working um, as a footwear designer is like the biggest group project. So I think growing up, I didn't love group projects and working with other people, but like when you get to like a company like you have to work together and collaborate and it's actually really fun and really energizing because everyone has cool ideas right um so i just thought maybe we'd i'd show a little bit on how you could draw shoes if you don't know how to draw shoes or where you might start if you're interested that sounds good that'd be fun yeah let's see it 
All right. Um, so there are a couple a couple tools I use when I design shoes, right? The easiest one is like paper and pencil. Hopefully everyone has that. Sometimes, however, I use my iPad and I draw in Procreate or on my Cintiq, which is like a fancy screen um, that you draw on. Um, but really the easiest way was a pen and like pen and paper. Um, let's see. So got a couple steps. I'm gonna show you a four step way to draw a shoe. And hopefully that's easy enough. All right, so this is breaking it down. We've got, you draw the, the plane, the line that it sits on. You draw the sole and the shape of the sole. This is called toe spring. So some shoes will have more toe springs. Some shoes, some shoes are flatter. Like if you look at like an Air Force One or a blazer, it's like flatter on the bottom. Draw the heel draw the collar, and then the upper shoe. So I'm going to draw that for you really quick. So step one, draw the plane. Bigger one, okay. Step two, draw the outsole. Step three, draw the heel. And then step four, and this is kind of like a two-part step, collar and upper, right? And that's pretty pointy. But from here, you can draw the tooling, you can put laces on, you can put whatever branding you want or shapes you want on the shoe, right? So that's like the most basic way to draw a shoe. Sometimes I'll do things like tape up a shoe um, or I'll tape up a last. And the last is what we build the shoe from. It's the shape of the foot that we're building the shoe around. So it can be pointy, it can be round, it can have all kinds of different shapes. So I might tape them up, use a Sharpie and start to draw on it. And make sure the shoe is actually taped up. You don't wanna draw on your shoes, but I just use like Mexican tape or something like that. And sometimes when I'm sketching, I'll just, I'll just figure out, okay, maybe the toe down has a shape like that, you know, just like try things, see how it changes. If you don't like it, you just put more tape over it, you draw it again. Um, so those are a couple of tools for, um, for like how to get started. And then um, just really basic for those who aren't familiar, I thought I would share, let's see where to go, the basic, parts, the basic parts of a shoe. I think Darren is wearing Air Force Ones today. This doesn't have a swoosh on it, but. Um, I know everyone's at home right now, so you can't like scream out and you're not, you're muted. But let's go through this together, all right? What, what do we think? Let's start with an easy one, okay? This part, anyone know what this part is? The tongue. The tongue. The tongue. Yeah, throw it in the chat, everyone. Yeah, I'm waiting. You guys, you guys know what this is. Um, does anyone know what this part's called around here? That we call the collar. Is the collar typically something that is? Uh, designed or um, is it pretty kind of common and similar throughout all shoes? Yeah, so a collar is a total choice that we have to make when we're designing. If you think about basketball shoes, you have low basketball shoes, you have mid basketball shoes, you have high basketball shoes. All of those things are like chosen and designed for a reason, right? Like the athlete prefers a low top or an athlete prefers a high top because they want more ankle support. So those are all decisions that we make along the way. Um, so yeah, the collar line is what we would call that. And it's also all about like the comfort, right? It's that comfortable part around your ankle and you will notice if it's not comfortable, right? You'll get blisters and you'll have ankle, you'll have blisters on your ankle. And the collar, does that provide uh, support to reduce injury or uh, you mentioned low, mid, high for basketball? Mm -hmm. Um, do any of those sizes uh, reduce the chances of injury or, or provide more ankle support? 
Yeah, I think, you know, it's, I, it's really different for every athlete. Like as you pl- as you play the sport, like a lot of athletes will wear braces. And so they might not want a high top, but some athletes prefer a high top and they don't, you know, might not wear a brace or they might feel more comfortable that way. So it's a, it's really a personal preference that you have to kind of learn about and research. If you're designing shoe for, say you're designing shoes for 13 year olds, in New Orleans that play basketball. Maybe go out there and talk to a bunch of 13 year olds in New Orleans that play basketball and see what their preferences are and what and what they really like to wear. Um, so that's, that's a good way to get what we call insights. Um, this part is called the quarter of the shoe and that part we often design to have support, right? As you lace around your foot, you usually want your shoe to like start to hug your midfoot, that quarter area. And then there are two parts of what we call the soul, right? Um, does anyone want to take a guess? Someone said that you just learned this, so I'm looking at you, Nola. Um, this part we call the midsole. And this part that touches the ground, we call the outsole. And sometimes they're made of two different materials. What do you think? we use very commonly for our outsole. Maybe rubber. That's a very common material that companies use for outsole design. And rubber is great because of traction and durability. But in rubber, there are like probably hundreds of types of rubber to pick from. And that's where a lot of the engineers and chemists and scientists come in. So outsole, Midsole. We got two left. This area, I realized, could be called out a couple different things, but we call this area the vamp. It's also called the toe box. The toe box is the shape um, of where your toes are. Some people want more room in the toe box. Sometimes you want it tighter. Um, it's also just called the toe. So vamp. Toe box, toe, right? I'm gonna put vamp because that's that's usually what I talk about. And then up here we call this the eye stay. So the eye stay is where the eyelets are, and the, through the eyelets we put the laces. So these are when you're designing a shoe, whether it's through sketching or like any of the techniques I just showed you. These are things to definitely draw in there and think about, and think about what you want that function to do. What is the athlete doing? How much support do they want in the quarter? What collar height do they feel like? The eye stay, how many how many eyelets do they need? You know, Do you wanna lace it really far down towards the toes, or do you just want a couple eyelets at the top? What does that toe box or that vamp shape look like? How much room do you want for your toes to move? And then what do you want that midsole to be made of? And what do you want the outsole to be made of? So these are all things to keep in mind when you're sketching and drawing and designing that shoe. I love that. And uh, I'm going to throw up a question here from Mr. Green, because I think it applies to what you're talking about with uh, the vamp and the toe. Um, He says, design is cool, but I want to know if a comfy shoe is better than looks. For example, baseball cleats are uncomfortable in simple designs. So you were talking about like the space in, in the shoe. Um, is, is the space in the shoe helpful for a specific sport? Um, and also, you know, Mr. Green's question here. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And a lot of times when you're designing things like baseball cleats or um, track spikes or soccer boots, like, you want them to be comfortable. However, you need them to be really tight around your foot so that you're moving one with your foot. So it's a constant, um, I would say, design and engineering problem to continuously solve around how you can build in comfort while keeping that shoe really snug and tight around your foot so it's not slipping, it's not slipping on like grass, It's, um, it's like staying really close to your foot. So that's, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, of like we, as designers, we wear test and we want our shoes to be comfortable. That is a priority for us, hands down, especially when you work for a big company, a company like Nike or Adidas, you hope that people 
see those shoes and they think they're um, they're automatically comfortable, right? Um, so that's definitely something that we go back and forth and we test for and we try to take feedback and weigh those priorities, those priorities of speed and and like clamping down around your foot and being tight versus and the priorities of being comfortable or um, cushioned and loose and things like that. So you're, you're constantly working towards a solution together. That's excellent. Long answer for that. Well, uh, I want to throw up a another question if you're cool with it. Um, yeah. what, this one's coming from Ashley Dean. How has technology advancements allowed you to enhance your creativity in shoe design? Oh my gosh. This is a big one because um, I think it's like all the best shoes are from technological advancements, right? And whether that's a new midsole foam that just feels amazing or whether it's from a new process like Flyknit, um, even things like 3D design, computational design, using 3D programs to make shoes and forms that you could never make before just by drawing. Um, these technologies are super inspiring to me. We might get handed a technology um, that has some kinks worked out, but then as a designer and with your partners in development and engineering, you can start to like brainstorm, like what can we do with this? Um, and to me, that's the most exciting part of being a footwear designer is um, working with these amazing athletes and then getting new technologies that are gonna totally change the game, that are gonna take the shoe to a totally new place. When the Air Force One came out, it was totally different compared to everything else that was out there on the market, right? We look back and it might not look like that, but um, but that's why it was so amazing, right? If you think about any shoe or any car um, or anything that like that is such a classic and an icon, it's probably because there was some technology in it that made it better than anything else out there that just took the industry to a totally new place. Um, so yeah, technology comes in all forms. It comes in the midsole foams, the application of the materials, so the textiles, um, the, the technology used to make those textiles, like Flyknit and the machines used to make them, um, and even in color, like you said. So think about the way you can innovate with color. Like, that's super exciting, right? Um, what if things like color changed or what if things you know, like you can apply innovation to all of these aspects. Yeah, I love that. And and innovation comes from thinking outside the box. So that's that's a really good point. And you know, from a technology standpoint, uh, 3D printers are coming more common, uh, especially within the the schools. So um, depending on if your school has one, you know, I'd love to see you know if you're able to use that to build a shoe. But, you know, from the technology side, um, the process, like like the whole process of designing a shoe. Uh, mm -hmm. Jenny would like to know how long does the average shoe design take? So that's a good question. Some are faster than others. Some take years to make, right? And some ideas are years in the making. So on average, I would say a couple years. Um, which means that you have to be thinking so far ahead in the future, right? Um, when you draw things and, and put those um, lines down on a piece of paper, it needs to look new and you need to be thinking in a space that for instance, say is two years out, okay? Um, and then there are teams at all of these companies that think five years out, 10 years out, you know, like they think a real, like they think really far in advance. So I think that's, that's a part you want to think about is like, what is the future going to look like? And what you make is actually going to define what the future looks like. Excellent. Yeah. Um, let's take a couple more questions here. Um, I'm going to go through and, and one is really about um, the Nike symbol. Like, mm -hmm. you know, not just the Nike symbol. Let me uh, show my air forces again. Like even like like a basketball on it. Like, how do they put this stuff on the shoe? Yeah, there are, there are a bunch of types. There are a bunch of ways to do that. Um, you can stitch it on, right? Like you take a piece of leather, you stitch around it. Um, you can 
these are like painted on, on the fly knit. Um, that's painted on, you can screen print on, um, you can, what we call like fuse um, a swoosh on, so basically glued on. And sometimes it's molded in like this one. This one's molded into the rubber. It's part of the rubber. This one is kind of the glued on technique I talked about, right? Um, this one is embroidered, I think. So if you think about embroidery, like that's that's embroidered on. Um, so really, really quite a few endless options for getting a swoosh on there and getting your design on there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the next the next question is, is from David Andrews. And, you know, it, it's for me, the question is more geared around, you know, how can um, really anyone looking to get a Nike shoe use Nike ID to help kind of create their own? Yeah, um, probably not the expert to speak to this, but uh, I think if anyone's played around with Nike ID, there's opportunity to customize with color and material, um, with text on your on your shoes. I don't know what Nike's plans are for Nike ID, but this is something, this is a cool idea, right? Like maybe this is an idea that if you're interested in designing shoes, you, you think about how can, how can you create custom shoes for people? Like that's a that's a cool that's a cool problem to solve. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, anything else that you would like to share? We do have a video that uh, we, we'd love to to show that will help inspire uh, these students to go out and design their own. Yeah, nothing left here. Thank you so much for listening and and having me. I. This is this is super exciting, and I'm really excited for everyone at these camps, everyone watching, and and yeah, I think just keep doing the research, start sketching um, if you're interested in the footwear design field. Love that, and uh, we'll we'll come back and close it out. But please uh, check out this video, and we hope you enjoy it. When designing a shoe, manufacturers, including Nike, think about the design process while demonstrating how sustainability can make their product better for athletes and better for the planet. No matter what sport we are playing, we are always seeking how we can improve our skills to gain an advantage on our competition. And the shoe that we wear can play an important part in that. While an athlete is focused on how the shoe will improve their performance, the shoe designer is focused on the process. A process is the action or steps we do to achieve a desired result. When shoe designers come up with a new idea or think of ways that the shoe can be more sustainable, they'll often follow the engineering design process. Nike has provided many enhancements and sustainability components that have been included in this design process. Let's take a look at one of Nike's most popular shoes. This lightweight yet sturdy shoe was designed with sustainability in mind. The manufacturing process reduces waste by 60%, which is nearly 1 million pounds of waste per year. And that's equivalent to 600,000 basketballs and can cover the distance of 160 miles. So the Flyknit shoe design focuses on six sports, running, training, sportswear, soccer, basketball, and football. Each shoe made from Flyknit contains almost 10 plastic bottles. Now it's your turn to design a shoe. What are the characteristics of the shoe you want to design? Factor in color, durability, comfort, cushioning, and stability when coming up with your design. The engineering design process is a series of steps that can be used to solve a problem. So think about this process in terms of how shoes were developed in the past and how they are being developed now. So now that you have a better understanding of the engineering design process, it's your turn to come up with some new ideas following each of these steps. So we want you to use this process to design your shoe and look forward to seeing your creativity and ways to practice sustainability. Thanks for joining. All right, love it. Uh, well, well, again, just thank you everyone that has been following along, asking the questions, 
and especially thank you to Christina. Uh, really insightful and, and fun to, to hear from you. And uh, I think that this is going to inspire uh, a lot of different youth throughout the country to uh, hopefully go and, and design some shoes of their own. So uh, just thank you again. Yeah, thank you so much. Can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Awesome. That's it for uh, today's virtual field trip. Thank you all for joining and we will see you soon.